static site, the web server simply delivers a piece of HTML to, to the browser. With the dynamic sites, the web server does some work and uses databases, uses the input that users supply, maybe uses some other sort of uh, sources of data, puts that together to create an HTML page on the fly. A few key things that I want you to take away is that number one, regardless if it's a static or dynamic site, it ends up being HTML to the client. The server processes all that stuff and produces HTML. In the case of a static site, the server doesn't really have any processing to do. It just takes the finished file and delivers it. In the case of a server-side script, the, the, the server takes code, programming code, whether it be in PHP, Ruby on Rails, Pythons, AS, Python, ASP.NET, um, Java, processes it, and then creates HTML. And again, one of the big ingredients in many of these dynamic sites are forms, all right? Because a form allows you to collect the user input and send it to the server. You know, think of it like telling your sandwich en engineer at Subway whether you want peppers on it or mayonnaise or, or do you want it baked or whatever. All right. Let's look at some of the things that are on forms and talk about when it is good to use them. What are some things, some, some components, that you will find on a form in HTML? Think about some entry form that you might have seen. Pardon me? Text boxes, yeah. Text boxes are sort of one of the most basic form element. All right. How would you describe a text box? What can you put in a text box? It's a place for, somebody to... it's a place for someone to put input data. It allows you to put in um, freeform data. In other words, it's not formatted. You can put type anything into a text box. Um, and it is a single line, all right? In other words, it's not multiple lines. So, uh, for example, every login form that you've seen has had a text box for your user ID, right? You can put anything in there. It's a single line. Yes? So, for like comments and stuff like that, you know, for a blog or something, would that be a text box? Well, okay, the question is, is what about multiple line things? Like if you put comments in or description or, you know, Register your complaint here, you know, and you give them a little tiny text. No, 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 you give them uh, a big area. That's actually called, that's actually something different. That's called a text area. A text area is like a text box except it's multiple line. So you could put in, you could type a paragraph of things. What uh, Career Services was talking about, like, about like cutting and pasting your resume, into, uh, uh, onto a form, it would be a text area, right? Because uh, if you have a one-line resume, uh, well, you know, Einstein might have been able to get away with a one-line resume. Hi, I'm Einstein. I made up E equals MC squared. It, prob <laughs> it probably would get him a lot of jobs, all right? Everyone else but Einstein probably needs a text area for, uh, for their resume, all right? Now, I did make the statement, uh, I, I, I'm surprised I didn't get a question about, I said you can put anything into a text box, but, you know, hmm, you've all seen cases of like it tells you, hey, user ID not found, or it'll tell you you must enter a number here, or something along those lines. That's actually handled not in the HTML, but that's handled either on the server side through scripting or through client side scripting, JavaScript, which we'll talk about. Um, shortly. Shortly not today, but shortly in a, in a week or two. So, strictly the HTML, you define a text box and they can put anything in. You can limit through HTML the number of characters they put in, but you can't limit what characters they put in via HTML. Alright? So there's two, text box and text area. Another one. What about HTML5? Can you limit it? 
That's a good question. HTML5, can you limit what is put in? I am not sure on that. I don't mind saying I don't know. <laughs> if I was a smart aleck uh, teacher, I would say something like, um, yeah, I was saying like, th th that's an excellent idea. Why don't you prepare a report for us next time? <laughs> I, I had a high school teacher that did that. He was like, I, he was the one teacher that I really, I could not stand him. And he didn't even do that to me. And I, I got good grades in this class. I still didn't like him. I, I think I can say these things. He taught math. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it, I, I don't know. You might be able to piece together a biography uh, of me. Uh, I have mentioned, for example, that John Grash, an adjunct here, was my computer teacher. Yeah. If you do some figuring, that will tell you that I attended Lorraine High School. All right. If you take a, a rough estimate of my age, based on the, the, the gray of my beard and, <laughs> and other factors, you could probably get my age at least within 10 years or so. So that would put me at Lorraine High School within probably so anywhere from 70 to 80, we'll say. All right, 1970 to 1980. And you could go back and look up all the math teachers and try to figure out which one I'm talking about. All right? So uh, we'll just stop there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go to classmates.com and, all right, what's another thing you can put uh, on a form? Yes. Okay, they mention a label and, yeah, labels are on, yeah, labels are on a form. We'll talk about them. They're really not thought of as a form control. They're really just text. But um, when we get into accessibility, we'll talk about how, just like with a table, it's hard for someone that's visually impaired to associate a table cell with a column and a row. All right? It's hard for someone that's visually impaired to associate a piece of text with a text box. In other words, someone that can see knows that the name belongs to that. So we have to tell it that this is a label for that. And we'll do that with the label tag. So yeah, labels is a good, is a good example uh, of it. I first said I, I wasn't crazy about that as an example, but yeah, that is a good example. All right. Other things that we can have on a form. A button. All right. Okay. There's actually a couple different kinds of buttons. The most common button is a submit button. All right. What does a submit button do? Right. It sends the data to the server to be processed. Those of you that are fan, uh, fans of Star Trek The Next Generation, that would be the Make It So button. In other words, when they click on it, that actually goes and it does what it's going to do. It sends it to the server. There's actually two other kinds of buttons, though. And I want to introduce them, even though we're not going to spend tons of time talking about them, at least not now. What are the other kinds of buttons? Yes. Okay, a radio button is, 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 it has the word button in it, but, but that's, that's not the same kind of button. So we'll hold that thought for, for a few minutes. A radio button. What's another kind of button? Okay, a ch okay, checkbox is also another control. But again, it's not really a button. All right. There's actually two kinds of buttons other than the submit button. There is a reset button or a clear button that clears out all the data in the form. Don't use this one. <laughs> what am I telling this for? I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I'm telling you in case you see it and think, boy, that would be a good idea. I'm preemptively telling you, no, that's not a good idea, you know. And there's a good article in Angel about why it's not a good idea. The bottom line is, it's very easy to, yeah, accidentally hit it instead of the one that you want. Let me see if I can find an example of it. I think... 
there is a good example of this in the website of a community college in the North Central Ohio area. Yep, yep, yeah. That that I, I do that three times a week yeah. at least. You actually have to click it. You actually have to click it. Yeah, that yeah. That's another thing. But all right. What is this? This is an angel. No, this isn't an angel. This is in this is uh, the web page of a community college in Northeast Ohio. All right, or North Central Ohio. Notice this additional search criteria. All right, let's see. I want a class that meets Monday or Tuesday, or let's say Tuesday and Thursday. And I want it to be a CISS class. All right. And I don't care what time it is. I definitely want the, the teacher to be Zellers. <laughs> All right. The rest of it doesn't matter. I think I'll go and search. Oh, boom. Oh. Clear criteria. Oh. Two buttons right next to each other. The bigger of the two, which what does bigger mean? More bigger means more important, right? So the bigger of the two is clear criteria. Now they are different colors, but there's really nothing. I suppose you could look at that green and say green for go. So that's sort of halfway a good design thing. Assuming, of course, you're not colorblind, in which case green doesn't mean anything to you, right? All right. Um, and again, they're bigger. They're right next to each other. Now, let's think of this. What percentage of the time do you think you want to press the clear criteria button? Very rarely. What percentage of the time do you think you want to press the search button? A lot of the time. So, we'll say, you know, N, for the percentage of time that we want to press the clear button, is maybe, you know, 1 to 5 percent of the time, or five, 0 to 5 percent of the time. Therefore, 100 minus N will be <laughs> 100 to 95 percent of the time we want to press that. And yet, they're right next to each other. The clear search is before it, which also tends to give it the idea that that's more important. That's the one I want to click. And well, it's before it and it's bigger, so you're, you're almost guided to click that one, even though that's not the right choice. And if you think about it, how often, like, we'll go in here. All right. I want CISS courses that are this day and this day, and they're taught by Zellers. Oh, wait a minute. No, I want biology courses taught by Kessler, you know. You usually, if anything, you might say, no, 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 I want, I want it where it's not. Oh, they don't give you that option. Uh, <laughs> joke's on you. Uh, but no, okay, I decide I want NORAD instead, or whatever, or whatever. You could go and type that in. So, the bottom line is, the clear button is one that there's very rare instances to use. All right? So I say it just in case you see an example of it and think, gee, that might be a good idea that you, I hope I've talked you out of it. All right? The other kind of button is just a plain old button. We'll call this a button button. Proving again that you can alter any word by simply repeating it, right? Is it cold outside? Well, it's cold, but you know, it's not cold, cold. You know, <laughs> is this a button? Well, yeah, it's a button, but it's it's a button button. All right, what is a button button? A button button is a button that has no default behavior. It's not a submit button. A submit button automatically sends your uh, data to the server. A clear button automatically resets your form to the defaults. A button button doesn't do anything when you click on it unless you go and you give some sort of meaning to it. And what kind of meaning you're going to give to it, you're probably going to put some kind of JavaScript to it. That when you click on it, something happens via JavaScript. 
We'll revisit these when we cover JavaScript. This one we will never ever visit again, revisit again unless I'm simply to remind you not to use it. This one will be the example of our first button. Now, onto the other controls, a radio button. This is, a, this is a thing where at some point this might become obsolete, right? This term, not the radio button itself, right? Because like a lot of people probably don't have buttons on the radio anymore or whatever. What's the idea of a radio button? What does a radio button mean? Yeah, when you click on one, the others go off. So it, it's a mutually exclusive list of options. So you can't answer yes and no. You can't answer no and maybe. You have to choose between yes, no, and maybe. Just like the radio button in, in cars, when you press this station, the other station goes off. What's a checkbox? Yeah, a checkbox more or less is similar to a radio button in, the, in that you can check it on or off. The difference is, is a checkbox is really simply a yes or no question, you know. Um, to select your, your pizza toppings, you know, pepperoni, anchovies, mushrooms, banana peppers, and so on. That's not mutually exclusive, right? You could select more than one. You can consider each one of them a yes or no question. Do I want pepperoni? Yes or no. Do I want that? Yes or no. And so on down the line. So, again, Um, that's a checkbox, whereas a radio button is, is mutually exclusive. Anything else? There's at least two more, three, two more that I can think of. A picture box? No, not really. You can make a button look like a picture, but it's still a button, yes. A calendar control, that's a good one, but that's not really built into HTML. You, you could come up with, with one of your own, but that's not really built into HTML. Yes? Drop a drop-down list, yeah. Or a combo box if you're a VB fan. <laughs> that, for the most part, by default, that's going to behave like radio buttons. That is, it's a set of mutually exclusive options. You pick, your, you, know, you pick your state that you live in, all right? Um, you can't live in Ohio and Michigan, right? Toledo tried, and, and we ended up getting it, all right? Now, uh, actually, by configuring it, you actually can make it to work like checkboxes. You can make it where the choices are not mutually exclusive. But typically, by default, you don't do that. All right. Well, you know, usually by default you make uh, drop downs mutually exclusive. There's one more, and I don't blame you if you don't get it, but you all have seen it when you have logged on to Angel. That's not cryptic enough for you. Yeah, there you go. Well, let's go log on to Angel. <laughs> no. The there's only one question like that tables is the answer for in this class. And, and, and that is, what do you use to show a table of data? All right. That answer is tables. Everything else is not tables. Yeah, what should we not use to do layout? Right, tables. Yeah, password box, exactly. Notice how that's different than a text box. My username is a text box. My password is in a password control. And the difference between that, as you can see, is the password isn't echoed back to the, to the user. So if someone's looking over your shoulder, they don't get to see your password. All right? So that's the other control. All right. What we will do next time is we will revisit these and talk a little bit about when to use them. It's pretty obvious when you use what, right? But there, is, there are some implications of, of that, especially between checkbox, radio buttons, and uh, drop downs. You know, the, the, you do sometimes have to give a little thought of what you want to do with those. All right. Um, but we'll spend a few, uh, a few minutes talking about the appropriate usage. Then we'll actually go in and implement uh, some of these and, and, and create forms that contain these. Questions?
All right, we'll see you over in lab.